I'm putting together a new miniature. And look at that, it's aptly named Laurel's Tailor. How kind of them to name a kit after me. Actually, it's called Lisa's Tailor and it's from Robotime. This kit has all the standard kit stuff, instructions, and well, all the little pieces. Before getting too far into this, I wasn't too thrilled with the fabric provided in this kit, so I decided to use my own. This floral fabric is kind of my centerpiece fabric, and I grabbed all these other pieces that worked with the same palette. And these too, because I wanted more prints. First things first, I needed to paint these. They provided off-white paint, but I wanted white, because I'm basic like that. Whatever Laurel wants, Laurel gets. Now I've protected my workspace, I can get painting. All right, first coat done. And it looks pretty patchy, but it's a first coat. For the second coat, I varied the direction of the paint strokes so it would hide the paint strokes better on the second coat. And it's still patchy. About a million coats later, it's finally looking good. Look at me being smart and using a hair dryer. I'm really glad I didn't use that tiny bottle of paint because apparently MDF is a sponge. And now on to the back to paint a million more coats. I did some research after the fact. Apparently you can seal the MDF with PVA glue first and it won't suck up all that paint. Wish I knew that first. And now to let it dry. You know what's better than a paper wood floor? A real wood floor. Well, I guess a paper floor is a real wood floor. But mine is gonna be made with wood planks, specifically five and a half inch stir sticks. They're the exact same width as the planks in the printout. So I'm using wood glue and staggering the planks to, you know, make it look like a real wood floor. But something got out of alignment, so they ended up at this angle. But I filled that spot up and we'll trim it out later. No one will ever know. Okay, so this might be being super anal, but stir sticks aren't perfect widths, or, or is it heights? And I wanted my floor to be as smooth as possible, and that means sanding it down. Don't worry, I'm wearing a mask. I started with 100 grit sandpaper to do the aggressive part, wiping it down with a damp cloth and checking its smoothness with my finger. Then I grabbed a finer grit to make it feel even smoother. After I was satisfied with it, I used some gouache to stain the wood, then sealed it with a polyurethane sealer, then set it aside to dry. Now that my walls were dry, I could assemble the main building. There was trim that needed to go on the walls, so I put the wall template piece on top and marked where the trim would go with my awl. Once one side was done, I lined up the walls to make sure the trim pieces were even. Then, pop the walls in the slots, which wasn't easy because there was a bunch of paint buildup and I had to carve it away just to get it to fit. And then I glued it together with wood glue. After those went on, on went the pieces that make up the floor foundation. And wouldn't you know it, I glued two of the foundation pieces as the trim. So I deprived those off and put the right trim pieces on so I could finish the bottom. Well, this isn't getting off to a very good start. Well, I learned my lesson, and now I'm utilizing the parts sheet provided to make sure I'm grabbing the right pieces for the windows. Looks good. Well, the paper backing for the windows was a totally different color than the window pieces provided, and the trim and sills were off-white to go with the off-white walls I didn't paint, so I had to paint them to match. Oh, and surprising enough, that's the only cat appearance in this video. I only needed to paint one side of these, which made the process not awful. I hope you like watching things being painted because there's a lot of that in this video. So this was probably dumb, but I decided to try to make these windows swing open. This involved taking my new pin drill and drilling tiny holes in the window frame and window, then gluing the tiny parts of wire and touching up my paint job. I'll just insert these window sills real quick while I wait for things to dry. One thing that's cool about these windows is that they have clear plastic for the glass. These paper window pieces sandwich in the plastic so it's not just raw plastic glued to one side. Well then I threaded the wires through the drilled holes and I have swinging windows. Pointless, but it still made me happy. Next, I glued the windows in their designated holes. Then grabbed my now white window trim and glued that on. You see that gross yellow on the outside? That's where I accidentally put wood glue. I also noticed I managed to get dark smudges all over the outside. Well, that's future Laurel's problem. Then there's this cute little ironwork piece that's made of cardboard that goes on last, and I love it. 
Side note, I got these cute little dishes that I can put all the little tiny bits in so they don't get lost. And I totally missed the mark and tiny bits went everywhere. I hope I didn't lose anything. To finish the windows, I needed to make a curtain. I grabbed some white fabric and cut it to size, then put fray check on most of the sides. Then dig through my lace box and found some blue lace to trim the curtain with and glued that across the bottom. While that dried, I glued in the eyelets to cover up the holes. Then I grabbed the appropriate wire for the curtain rod and bent it as instructed. Then stuffed that in the holes to make sure it fit. Then I glued down the sides of the curtain and the top, leaving a channel to feed the wire through. Then squinched it together to look all cute and curtainy, and then glued a small piece of lace around it to keep it together. Then I glued the rod in place, but to get it where I wanted it, it left these little tails on the outside, so I bent them down and again left that for future Laurel to figure out. Next, I started on the electrical. It's normally my favorite part, but not this time. As you can probably see, these wires are so thin. Well, this isn't gonna go well. And here's where the trouble begins, trying to strip the wires. Every time I tried to strip off the casing, the wire just broke off. Finally, I got them to wrap around the bulb, then covered it with the shrink tube. I tried shrinking it with the hair dryer to no avail. So then I did what any normal person would do and take fire to it. Now I can put together the light shade, which is just a circle with a white circle on the inside glued together to make a cone. Problem was, I think the flame was too hot for the wires and one of them broke off. So I had to take off the heat shrink and do it over again. Meanwhile, my light shade got all funky, so I had to cut a new one out of some black paper and go again. The next problem was the topper to the light shade was nowhere to be found. I don't know why. So I had to figure something else out. I dug around and ended up finding some ball chain and glued that around instead. Except that didn't cover up the ugly light prongs. So I grabbed some larger heat shrink and put that on over the prongs to make it look a little cleaner. I decided for the bookshelf, I wanted it to look like wood, but I realized I didn't have any brown paint, but I did have brown stain. So I tested it out to see the color and see if I could do wood grainy strokes. Looks good to me, let's get to it. I did lots of strokes on the pieces in several coats and got as much stain on me as I did the pieces. When they were dry, I could add in the tiny handles. I measured and bent the wire, then made sure the handle fit in the holes. This is the first kit I've done where there's pre-drilled holes for the wires, and I am here for it. So I glued that wire in place and the other beads. Then just glued the bookshelf together, trying to keep the shelves level. Looks like wood to me. Time to make some little fabric rolls. This polka dot fabric and this floral fabric are the only ones I'm using from the kit. I cut the fabrics to size and then folded them over the cardboard and glued them closed. Aren't they adorable? Next, I'm making some tiny pillows. The instructions say glue them, but I've had some bad luck gluing pillows in the past, so I'm sewing them instead. I did one where I just whip stitched it around the outside, but didn't really like how it looked. So for the others, I sewed them together normally and flipped them inside out and stuffed them, then stitched them closed. Now to put together some boxes. I cut them out of the template, scored the lines with the back of my X-Acto knife, and glued them together. For one of the small ones, I wrapped the straw-like twine around it and stuffed two little bundles of fabric inside. Then for another basket, I did the same thing, but added on handles. I don't know why there's a little coffee grinder in this sewing room, but there is, so I'm putting it together. I basically glued a little box together, then cut and bent a wire for the handle. Then I threaded it through a bead that was in another bead and put them in the box. Voila! Next, I cut out the calendar pieces and accordion folded them. Now I have to make a metal topper for it. So I cut it out of the metal sheet, and when trying to clamp it around the pages, I broke it. It's okay, they provided enough for two. And I did it again. Time to get creative. But what do I have that's metal? Oh, tin foil. So I glue three layers of tin foil together and repeat the process of folding it and it works. It's a little more delicate, but it's getting glued down anyway, so it'll be fine. I glue that and a little flower picture to the side of the bookcase. When I went to glue the grinder on, I decided there wasn't enough contrast between that and the case, so I made a little doily out of this lace to put under it and make it stand out a little more. 
for the little set of drawers, I wanted to make it a light teal color like the windows, so I start painting all the pieces. Told you there was a lot of painting. I was smart this time around and put double stick tape down to hold the pieces in place while I painted them. I learned for these pieces of furniture that three coats is about right to cover everything. Once dry, I proceeded onto the handles, which were basically the same as the bookcase, and then glued it all together. I used the part sheet to line up where the drawers go, and then glued the front, sides, and top on. And then touch up my paint job. I'm beginning to think I should assemble, then paint. The tiny hat they want you to make with the kit is this fabric covered 1900 style hat, which isn't really my thing. So I'm using the hat template and covering it in tape because I'm going to make a cute straw hat. I'm using some hemp string and trying to start a coil on the top of the hat, which wasn't working. So I decided to start the coil on its own. I decided at this point it was just easier to coil it myself by slathering it in glue and coiling it around. Then coil it on itself to make the crown of the hat. For the brim, I put tape on a piece of paper to keep the hat from sticking and then coiled around the brim. The only ribbon in this kit was yellow, but I wanted a black ribbon. I didn't have black ribbon, but I did have a black fabric marker. So I glued that around the hat for that classic straw hat look. For the treadle sewing machine, I wanted that wood look again, but wasn't 100% in love with how the stain worked on the bookcase. And then I realized, I have an art degree. I know how to mix paint. So I took some purple and some yellow and mixed a brown color to try to get close to the stain color I used. I needed it to be a little warmer, so I added some red and a little more yellow. And I think I got pretty close. So I did the same strokey treatment and the color doesn't exactly match, but I'm so much happier with how this one turned out. In between assembling the top of the machine cabinet, I worked on the treadle mechanism by putting in the pedal. At this point, I realized I put the top together wrong, so I pried it apart and redid it. Okay, back to the bottom. They had this little piece that connects the wheel to the pedal, and the instructions show it just pop it into place. But the holes weren't big enough, so I did what every good crafter does and covered everything in glue, jammed it together, and hope it sticks. While that dried, I finished the cabinet top and then touched up the edges with Sharpie. Trust me, it totally blends in. I also painted the sewing machine with a blackish nail polish to look appropriate. Then I stupidly glued the sewing machine to the top and pick out which fabric I want to drape over it. Why was it stupid to glue it on? Because I hadn't attached the bottom yet, and now it's going to be infinitely more difficult. After trying to glue the legs on, I found it easier to assemble the bottom legs and the mechanism on its own. Then glue that to the bottom versus trying to glue the legs on and insert it. Either way, it's done. The next piece of furniture is the work table. The instructions say to glue a tablecloth on it, but I liked the way it looked without it. It reminds me of my cutting table. So I just glued on the legs and started on the accessories. This tool holder was pretty straightforward to put together, except the back is bent. And I have no clue how to bend it back. Heat and steam, maybe? Either way, it threw off the measurements a bit, so I had to cut down the sides for it to fit together. Here's a tip for cutting glue paper together that has mirrored printing on both sides. Cut one side of each piece at the same point, glue them together, and then trim out the rest. It'll look a lot crisper than cutting them out separately and gluing them together. Okay, well this is the dump part. Well, dump part part one. I have to roll tiny spools of thread. I spend forever untangling this thread and then cut out the lengths I need. Then glue the end to the wood dowel. Once it dries, I get to winding, then glue that end down. They're cute, but it's dumb. Next, I make these cute bouquets of flowers by rolling these flower stems in a green tissue paper I cut and then tying it with thread, leaving a little loop and then cutting it in half. For the other flowers, I cut these tiny squares and fold them. Then glue them around the flower stems. Then cut some green tissue paper and wrap them all together and then glue them inside this bead face. Time to make the rolls of fabric. I cut little rectangles of fabric and then glued them to the dowels and rolled them up. They're so cute. So tell me something. Why does a tailor shop have a book on botanicals? I don't know either. So I decided to use the book template and make some sewing books with real sewing pages inside. I love them.
Once the accessories are done, I can put the table together. I glue on the tool organizer and the cutting mat. And then fill the organizer with the little spools of thread. I stuff some tissue paper in the boxes so the thread doesn't just disappear inside. I wound the darn things, they're gonna be seen. If you've watched my other videos, you know me. I love my rotary cutter. Now I'm not a sculptor, so I just cut a handle out of wood, painted it black, and glued a sequin on it. Now let's just add that to the table along with the vase of flowers, a cup, and a jar of whatever this is. I haven't made up my mind yet if I want the books there or not, so I'll just set them here for now. The next piece of furniture is that rack for the fabric rolls. There's a little plant that goes on top, so I stuffed a little hole with a piece of paper, put on a big blob of glue, and sprinkled some greenery on top. With that done, I could finish gluing the sides, top and bottom. Now Laurel, you promised us more painting. Well, here you go. I originally thought I was gonna paint the rest of the furniture black, but it didn't really go with my color palette, so instead I thought navy blue would be pretty. With my blue mixed up, I started painting the mirror pieces. Isn't that blue pretty? And then I assembled the stool and started painting that as well. Now that the mirror frame was dry, I could glue on the mirror, touch things up, and finish putting the mirror together. I decided to paint the chair after I assembled it, so I cut the tops off some cocktail picks for the back rungs of the chair, which were fiddly as heck. Then I started painting it way before the glue dried. How do I know it was too soon? Because it kept falling apart as I was painting it. Damn my hubris. While those were drying, I made the cushions for the stool and the chair using this turquoise fabric. I thought it'd contrast nicely. I used double stick tape so glue wouldn't leak through the top and then glued the edges on the back. And then I glued them on the furniture. Well, I did the same process with the ironing board cover, but used a more neutral fabric to make it look different, and so the fabric I draped on the board really popped. All right, so this is dumb part, part two. Winding the thread around these beads. Man, this was fiddly and difficult. These threads just slipped all over the place, so you know what that means. Slather it with glue and hope it dries clear. All right, I guess I gotta get back to this lamp. Since I didn't use black at all, and all the metal details were goldish, I dry brushed the shade with the gold paint, then painted the beads on top. The kit came with some old-timey pictures, and again, not really my thing. So instead, I printed out some fashion magazine covers to replace the non-sewing-related pictures. One goes in a frame for later, and the others go directly on the wall. I laid down a piece of the wall detail, then while that dried, I bent little hooks that went on the wall. I'm not great at bending wire, but I think these turned out pretty good. One gets glued on, and I'll glue the other one on later. Then the other images for the wall just get glued on. I glued on the other trim pieces, lining them up with the small top pieces. I then glued the ceiling together and placed in the light. And I realized I glued it backwards so it wouldn't fit on the top. I ripped the bottom off, but it ripped off part of the white paint, so I shaved off what I could, puffed in frustration, then problem solved. I painted it to match the windows, and it turned out pretty nice, actually. Next, I glued the light on the top and wired it up. Then, tragedy struck, and the lamp cord was too long. If you were in there, you'd hit your head on it. After a defeated sigh, I problem solved again, which involved me off camera, carefully slicing open the heat tube, and prayed I didn't cut through the wires. I then connected the wires to the battery to test it, and the light didn't work. When I squeezed the connection point, it did light up, but super flickery. I ended up taking a pair of pliers and just kind of really squeezing it at the connection point, and it seems to work now. So I installed the now shorter light again and moved on with my life. Necessity really is the mother of invention, and it's time to make the back look better. I took some 7-inch stir sticks and painted them white, cut off the round ends, and glued them on the corner. This added trim and covered up that glue mistake. It looks nice. Now to cover up all those smudges. Now this is about the extent of my clay molding skills. I rolled out a variety of different red clays to make bricks. My math said I needed about 100 bricks, so I cut a bunch. Then I tried to texture them with some tin foil and then baked it. 
When they were done, I broke them all apart and started gluing. I left little gaps and varied the brick colors as I put them on. Granted, they aren't to scale, but I didn't want to glue on like a billion bricks. I cut some of the bricks in half so I could stagger them. I honestly didn't expect them to cut very well. See you later, gross smudges. Well, I wanted to get fancy, but this could turn out badly. I wanted to add mortar between the bricks, but needed to test it first. So I glued a few bricks down and smooshed some modeling paste in the cracks. Then I used a makeup sponge to wipe away the extra. Time to do it on the real thing. Uh-oh, loose brick. Guess I'll just glue that back on and finish the job. I can call myself a mason now, right? Well, if I'm doing the back of the building, I may as well decorate the base. So I cut a bunch of stones out of egg cartons for that sweet, sweet texture. To make sure I had enough, I roughly placed them around the base as I cut, varying the size and shape. I then painted each one. To vary the grays, I put out a blob of black and a blob of white and then randomly mixed them together. Once they were dry, I glued them all around the outside, trying to puzzle piece them in place the best I could. I then squeezed glue in all the cracks and then rubbed dried coffee in there, tapping off the excess like dirty, dirty glitter. Then took some green diorama stuff my husband had and strategically placed them around the building. Maybe I've taken this whole thing a bit too far. Oh, in for a penny, in for a pound. Finally, it's moving day. Time to load in. First, let's fill up the bookcase. A little basket here, a pillow there, and all these little bolts of fabric. Hey, I store my fabric on bookshelves too. For the icing on the cake, I put in one of the tiny sewing books. Let's put it in place. Now that the bookcase was in place, I could hang that last hook. Then I placed the frame picture on top of the bookshelf and hung the tiny patterns on the hook. The drawer with the little newspaper and my adorably awesome hat went in next. Then in went everything else. Then I filled the rest of the baskets, hung the rolls of fabric on the rack and moved everything around a bunch. Then I finished it off with the rest of the tiny pillows. I decided to tape down that other book on the table. You know, for easy reference. You know, this is missing one more thing. There we go. This miniature room turned out so well, despite all the trials and tribulations along the way. I love all the little changes I made. You can really see how small changes can make a big difference. I think the colors are really cohesive and it looks a little more modern and put together. My favorite part is probably the hat. I am so proud of it. But having that ugly back would have really bothered me. Like a secret shame. So I'm glad I decorated the outside too. Some might say it looks cramped, but I think it looks quite authentic to every sewing room I've ever seen, especially mine. Creativity's messy, you know? I hope this inspired you to make something soon because if I can make it, you can too. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see me make more things, you can always like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye!